so today we will be doing a standard deviation for a, a continuous frequency distribution so first uh, let's write the formula or continuous frequency distribution now it is a continuous frequency distribution so you will be having class you will be having a frequency so you have to find the mid value okay this is what you have to do to begin with now first let's write the formula for direct method you also write it once again standard deviation is equal to sigma fi xi minus x bar the whole square upon n the whole under root and shortcut method standard deviation is equal to sigma fi di square upon n minus sigma fi di upon n the whole square the whole under root into wo ghar se bahar nikal diya c ko okay aisa yaad rakhna into c so under root only till here and then outside into c c is the class length over your d is equal to x or xi minus a upon c so please write the formula once again now over here we have a direct method calculators are allowed and we also have a shortcut method but here in continuous frequency distribution we would prefer that you use shortcut method only okay that is more preferable because in case your mean goes in fraction then you have to go for shortcut method so better you start with shortcut method only otherwise you will have to first find out mean if you are using a direct method then fi into xi and then you realize it is in fraction so you won't be able to use this formula because it will become very complex so then you will have to shift to shortcut so better you use only shortcut method okay so please keep this in mind and uh, let's go to the sums now all of you come to page number i'll be solving the illustration sum right now in the class in the lecture because exercise sums are already solved and that video lecture is already there in the app so page number 148 illustration 18 page number 148 illustration 18 so now over here let's read the question from the stand find the standard deviation of daily wages from the following information of wages in rupees of workers of factory now over here frequency distribution is given like this daily wages more than 130 more than 150 more than 170 more than 190 more than 210 and more than 230 so what type of frequency distribution is this it is a cumulative frequency more than type cumulative frequency distribution now already it is given more than more than more than so we know it is a more than type now the first step 
will be to convert this into a normal frequency distribution. So for normal frequency distribution, you will have to first make the class. So in the solution, first we start making the class. So 130 to 150, then 150 to 170, then 170 to 190, then 190 to 210 and 210 to 230. So you make the class. I'll just wait a while. Please write down the classes first. See more than 220, more than 230 is zero. So 230 and above likke bhi koi matlab nahi. It makes no sense because uh, 210 10 to 230 you have 14 person but more than 230 you have nothing so no need to make one more class okay only till year now let's make the frequency now for frequency What we have to do is highest minus lowest. So 150 minus 142 is 8. Then 142 minus 116. 142 minus 116 is 26. Then 116 minus 57 is 59. You take a calci and please do it. Okay. Then 57 minus 14 is equal to 43. And then 14 minus 0 is 40. Always do the total to check. So total is 150. So 150 total. More than one, more than 130 is 150 people. So here also you get 150. So that's fine. Always cross verify it. Now we have frequency. We find out mid value. So mid value X. So mid value X is 130 plus 150 divided by 2 is 140 then 160 then 180 then 200 and then 220 so we find the mid value frequency now d d is equal to x minus a so assuming what should we take assuming we take a 180 as the assuming so let me highlight it so 180 is the assuming so d is equal to x minus 180 upon okay, I'll use mark up it that would be easier upon 20 class length is 20 so you write 0 over here minus 1 minus 2, 1 and 2. Now you have D, you have frequency. So F I F I D I. So frequency is F I D I is 8 into minus 2. You can see the screen both highlighted cells. So frequency into D. 
so that comes to minus 16 then 26 into minus 1 then 59 into 0 0 then 43 into 1 and 14 into 2 so FIDI we have to find the total for FIDI also so let's find the total for FIDI it comes to 29 now formula in the formula let me write the formula standard deviation we can do over here standard deviation is equal to sigma fi di square upon n minus sigma fi di upon n the whole square the whole under root into C. So we have FIDI. Now we need to find out FIDI square. So FIDI square is I'll just show it to you over here. See FIDI square is equal to FI into DI into di now you already have fi fi into di over here fi di so when you multiply this with di you will get fi di square so let's calculate it is equal to fi di into di you can see the highlighted cells over here And the total 157. So now you have standard, uh, you have all the necessary values for finding standard deviation. You have sigma FIDI square, you have sigma FIDI, you have N, this is N. Then you have. Uh, C, which is the class length that is 20. So let's go for the formula. So standard deviation. S is equal to sigma fi di square. So 157 upon n is 150 minus sigma fi di upon n, 29 upon 150, the whole square and the whole under root outside into C, that is 20, which is equal to 157 divided by 150. which is equal to 1.0467 and 29 divided by 150 is equal to, you will get this type of answer. Now 0 0.19333333, what you have to do to find out square, very simple, you press into and then press equal to, you will get the square of it. So minus 0 0.0337, so 4. Under root into 20, which is equal to 1.0467 minus 0 0.0374, which is equal to under root 1.0093 into 20. 
which is equal to under root of 1.0093 is 1.0046 into 20, which is equal to 220.09. So here it is rupees. So rupees 20.09. Answer. Do it on your own, do on your calculators, okay? Then only you will get, get confidence of using the calculator and you will not make mistake in exam. Please don't copy the solution. You can do that, it's in the textbook also. But I want you to solve it so that you practice and you become confident while using this calculator. Now we are going to see this new formula, okay, please mark it, very important for exam. Now, this formula is known as coefficient of variation. Coefficient of variation. Now, what is this coefficient of variation? Very simple. It is basically coefficient of standard deviation expressed in terms of percentage. So coefficient of variation is equal to standard deviation upon mean into 100. So this is the formula, that's it. Now, when do we use? This is used for comparison. Now, when you want to compare two data, three data, four data, for example, one player, two player, three player, four player, okay, who is more consistent, who has more variation, or uh, maybe share price of uh, some companies, com share of some companies, the share price of some company, so company A share price, company B share price, share price of Tata consultancy services and share price of Infosys and you compare and then you say which share is more consistent, which share has more variation. So for that we use coefficient of variation. So what will answer you get? It is first of all expressed in terms of percentage and higher the percentage means more the variation, lesser the percentage means less the variation or more consistent. So if you want, you can write higher percentage or higher CV. CV is basically coefficient of variation. I'm just writing in short because of the limitation of this digital board. Higher CV means more variation and less consistency and lower coefficient of variation, I write percentage, okay. Means less variation. and more consistency. I hope you know what is more variation and less variation and more consistency and less consistency. So this is how we have to interpret and then we have to give our opinion or form some opinion, take some decisions. Okay, that is what we have to do. So please write this and then we go to illustration number 1919. So illustration 19, page number 150. Now what is this sum all about? From the following data of runs 
scored by two batsmen a and b in last 10 innings decide who is more consistent so here as you see the question says who is more consistent means we have to use the for formula coefficient of variation now when we have to use this formula for two batsmen okay we have to individually find mean for both of the data and standard deviation for both of the data mark this some very important for your exam so first you write the question okay so divide the page into two parts the left you use for a and right you use for b so write the heading and write the data as it is visible on the screen so you can see this so write the data accordingly okay so batsman a batsman b runs xi runs sir, we can't see you sir screen share nahi Done. Done. Sir, done. Okay, good. Now, uh, let's start. One minute, sir. One minute. Okay. Now, uh, you write the data for A and B, and uh, do the totals. Now, what columns we need to find out uh, mean and standard deviation? So, first, let's write the formula and see. now for batsman a and batsman b i have done again divided it into two parts so once you do this uh, in on the next page or on the same page again you write batsman a batsman b draw a line in the center and for mean now for mean i'll use the symbol x bar a which is for batsman a sigma xi upon a and mean for batsman b so x bar b is again sigma xi upon a now already we have done the total so 440 and 530 so let's check out 440 upon a how many batsmen are there 10 so divide by 10 which is equal to 44 And over your five thirty divided by ten, which is equal to fifty three. So mean is uh, not in fraction. So we use the formula x i minus x bar. If mean was in fraction, we would have gone for shortcut method. So come to the main information here. X i minus Forty-four, and then x i minus x bar the whole square over here. X i minus fifty-three, and then x i minus x bar the whole square. So now let's start. finding the numbers so over your 25 minus 44 so it will be a negative number minus 19 50 minus 
is six forty five minus forty four is one thirty minus fourteen seventy minus twenty six sorry plus twenty six forty two minus two thirty six minus eight forty eight plus four thirty four minus ten and sixty so sixteen let's see if it is becoming zero or not yeah it's zero so you always cross verify okay now x i minus x bar the whole square so 19 square 361 6 square 36 1 1 14 square 196 26 square 676 2 square 4 8 square 64 4 square 16 100 square 256 So one seven one zero is the total. Now let's go over your batsman B. So fifty three. So minus forty three. Seventy minus fifty three. Seventeen. Minus three, minus thirty-three, ninety-five minus fifty-three, forty-two. Then fifty-five, so two. Then forty-two, minus eleven, sixty, so seven, forty-eight. Minus seven, so forty-eight minus five, and eighty. Minus fifty-three is twenty-seven. It's a mistake. As you can see, there is some mistake over here. Yes, fifty minus fifty-three is minus three. so always have a habit of doing the total where you use xi minus x bar because sum of observation from the mean is always equal to 0 now now find the square keep calculators with you 43 square is 1849 17 square is 289 3 square is 9 Thirty-three is one zero eight nine. Forty-two square is one seven six four. Two square is four. One twenty-one. Eleven square. Forty-nine. Twenty-five. And twenty-seven square. Seven twenty-nine. So five nine two eight is the total. so we have now all the information are you done till now should i proceed yes sir okay now over here we have to now find out standard deviation so standard deviation for a Is equal to sigma x minus x bar the whole square upon n 
the whole under root standard deviation for b is equal to sigma xi minus x bar the whole square upon n the whole under root remember this standard deviation can never be negative it's not possible because koi negative value hai uska bhi hum square karenge if there is any negative value we will square that value it will become positive so always remember this standard deviation can never be negative so over here what's the total 1710 so 1710 upon n what is n n is 10 under root which is equal to under root of 171 which is equal to 13.076 so 13.08 runs here also mean 44 runs 53 runs now over here 5928 upon 10 which is equal to under root of 592.8 which is equal to 24.347 so 24.35 runs now we have got to mean i'll write once again mean of a is equal to 44 and standard deviation of a is equal to 13.08 mean of b is equal to 53 and standard deviation of b is equal to 24.35 no coefficient of variation coefficient of variation is equal to standard deviation of a upon mean of a into 100 and coefficient of variation standard deviation of b upon mean of b into 100 so let's write standard deviation of a is 13.08 upon 44 into 100 and over here 24.35 upon 53 into 100 find out twenty nine point seven two seven so twenty nine point seven three percentage and over you forty five point nine four Forty-five point nine four percentage. So we have got coefficient of variation of both. Now we have to answer the question that who is more consistent? So is me consistent? Con hai A ya B? What would you say? Who is more consistent? A or B? What would you say? B B A A is more consistent because coefficient variation is less. So we write the final answer. Okay, answer. Since coefficient.
or variation of a is a batsman or of batsman a is less than b batsman a is more consistent batsman a is more consistent so answer you have to write if you will not write this and you just find the values it's not correct it will go wrong so very important you have to write the answer Any doubt, anyone? You understood the steps. So yes, sir. Is uh, whenever there is comparison, you will have to go for finding mean and standard deviation for both, and you will use coefficient of variation for comparison. Come to now, illustration number twenty. illustration 20 now the following information is available for two workers of a factory worker a and worker b so mean mean time of completion of job so mean of a is 30 and mean of b is equal to 25 standard deviation is directly given to us so standard deviation of a is equal to 6 and standard deviation of b is equal to 4 which worker has more relative variation और फ्लक्चुएशन यानी किसका वेरिएशन इज मोर वेरिएशन इज मोर और फ्लक्चुएशन इज मोर इन टाइम टेकन टू कंप्लीट द जॉब वर्कर ए एंड वर्कर बी सो फर्स्ट लेट्स राइट द डेटा अवेलेबल टू अस सो डेटा इज दिस वे एक्स बार ए इज इक्वल टू थर्टी And standard deviation of A is equal to six. X bar B is equal to twenty-five, and standard deviation of B is equal to four. Now, since we have to compare both of them, we have to find coefficient of variation. So, coefficient of variation. of a is equal to standard deviation of a upon mean of a in 200 coefficient of variation of p is equal to standard deviation of b upon mean of b In two hundred. So let's calculate it one by one, which is equal to six upon thirty in two hundred, which is equal to twenty percent. I can directly write six five is a thirty, and five into twenty is hundred. Over here, four. Upon twenty-five into hundred, which is equal to sixteen percent. Twenty-five falls up, four falls up. So now you have got coefficient vary of variation of A as well as of B. Now you have to tell me who has more fluctuation. A. A. A yes. A. Very good because A is worker A. A is is having more coefficient of variation, hence it has relatively more variation. Okay, so let's write the answer. Sir. 
since coefficient of variation of worker a is more than worker b worker a's time has more variation I like it. So this is how you have to do the sums when every information is given. This can come as a short sum. Okay, everything is given. Just apply the formula and analyze and give a reply. Now, so this is how coefficient of variation sums are to be done. Now see over here. in this sum coefficient of variation of two series are 30% and 25% so let's say there are two series series 1 and series 2 okay always write the question always write this type of uh, uh, information okay properly because uh, there are two series so you don't get jumbled now coefficient of variation For first one is thirty percent, and for second one is twenty five percent. Standard deviation for series one. So standard deviation so which is fifteen and nine. Now we have to find out mean. So mean for series one. And series two. So let's apply the formula coefficient of variation is equal to s upon x bar into hundred. Because of lack of space, I'll do it over here. so for series 1 it is going to be 30 is equal to standard deviation is 15 upon mean into 100 <clears throat> so x bar will come over here and standard deviation will come in the denominator into 100 which is equal to 50 so mean for first series is uh, 50 and for the second series we have 25 is equal to 9 upon mean into 100 36 yes so x bar is equal to 9 By twenty five into hundred, twenty five fours, which is equal to thirty six. So mean for series one is fifty, and for series two is thirty six. So you can write answer. Mean of series one is equal to fifty, and mean. of series 2 is equal to 36 can come as a short sum important for exam 